Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. And today we taste the brand new Artbeck Supernova, released 2014. It's the comedy bottle. No, not the bottle, it's the miniature. Uh, there are, well, so few bottles of these Supernova that Artbeck does not dare to give these bottles into the open market. So only the committee members, which count six figures, I think, uh, will have access to this bottle. And as always, when you try to reach the server, it will go down. <laughs> Too many uh, accesses per second on this server. Uh, there had been uh, an Artbeck Supernova on the market before. Uh, the first bottling was 2009 and it was said it was the most smoky, peaty single malt whiskey all over the world from Scotland. And they were true in that moment because they were the first uh, bringing out these high ppm parts per million in which the peat level uh, is measured uh, at the malt level. Uh, then in the meantime there had been other whiskies with a higher ppm value on the market uh, so it's no longer the most peaty whisky in the world but hmm, uh, if you increase the ppm level which is typically at Artbeck between 45 and 50 I assume um, if you increase it further on to 100 which the first Artbeck Supernova in 2009 had uh, then the smoke really becomes stronger but sometime you reach a maximum and then it goes down you won't uh, a whiskey with 200 ppm, no, doesn't exist, but would be less smoky than one with 100. Um, where the peak lies, I don't know. I would suggest around 120, around 140. This might be the most peaty whiskey uh, available. I'm not aware of a bottle with this ppm value of smoke. Um, well, then the second release appeared in 2010 uh, and then it was gone. After this time uh, the Artbeck Supernova to the name Supernova, Supernova is the explosion of a star. So if a star reaches its end, the end of his life, its lifetime, then it explodes in a supernova. There are one or two supernovas every year in the whole universe. We are able to see that, uh, but most of them are very, very far away in different galaxies. And we should be afraid that those supernova explosions are far away, because otherwise, uh, if an explosion will be in the next 100, 200 light years away from the Earth, uh, we will see uh, an ice ball period. So we will freeze here from the uh, radiation. Well, so this is the content. It's like an explosion of a star. That intense, that full. Um, then they went further up to space with the Galileo. Um, this was a 12-year-old and the Artbeck Supernova didn't carry an age statement because it was quite new. It was an uh, experiment, so this experiment might be a few years older now. Um, and they shot a small sample of Artbeck whiskey uh, to the International Space Station. There you can meet and uh, meet, you can rent uh, small compartments, a liter, 10 liters, 100 liters, uh, for several tens of thousands of dollars for uh, some period in space. And then they put this small sample uh, into space 
and let it mature there. And after three years, they now get it back to Earth with the next, uh, not shuttle, but Soyuz uh, spacecraft returning. And uh, then they will have a look at the exactly identical uh, sample which was left here on Earth to see if there are differences in maturation in space and on Earth. Wow, supernova. Well, here uh, marketing uh, combines two different stories, the supernova story and the Galileo story together. I think it would have been better to bring a second Galileo. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Mm. Nano Rex. This is the company which rents space in the International Space Station. On 12th, September 12th, they will return to Earth in Kazakhstan. And then in Houston, they will be started uh, to investigate the sample. Uh, together with a sample from warehouse number three. Blah, 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 blah. 55% ABV. And here... Mm, ah, tasting note. Light. Gold brown in the color. Nose. Deep, intense, spiciness, smoked citrus, pears, citrus grass, pine needles, salty notes coming up, mineral notes from flintstone and granite, Granite is completely tasteless. It's the hardest stone at all. There aren't any molecules dissipating from granite. Smoke frisch mince mental. Taste soft warmth, peppery, spicy. Warp speed coming up. Well, okay. That's, it's more marketing than tasting notes, I'm afraid. So this is the third and last whiskey today. Perhaps I taste it in cask's length. I don't know. Sweet smoke, definitely. Some citrus and spices coming up in the back. Fresh fruit and pepper. The smokiness is not twice as strong as the Ugedal or the Cori Reckon I tasted before uh, are. No, it's non-linear. It's a different kind of smokiness. It's an aromatic, heavy smokiness. Uh, it needs water, definitely. And it's not <laughs> golden brown, it's straw, it's very light. <clears throat> it's young whiskey and probably part of it reused ex-bourbon, part fresh ex-bourbon casks. 
smokes coming up and the fruitiness in the back and the typical Artbeck sweetness. And this one loses the smoke if you dilute it. After the normal two outbreaks in cask length, this is not that different, I'm afraid. strong peppery note yeah peats coming up it's covering your mouth some chocolate coffee in the back so there might be different casks than the ex bourbon casks. Now, very aromatic. This whiskey might change taste after some resting period. I'm often asked, why don't you let the whiskey rest after you open the bottle? Well, old whiskies have had all the time in the world to oxidize in the casks. The casks were breathing and there was lots of oxygen and the whiskey will be totally oxidized and stable after the years. And the younger the whiskies are, the more you have the chance that the whiskey reacts in the first minutes or quarter of hours uh, through oxidization or changing taste, uh, most of it will be result from the evaporating fresh esters, evaporating alcohol. It's a lot slower than the fresh esters. So whiskey typically gains smoothness because those fresh sharp esters uh, uh, dissolve in the air first. So if you have young whiskies, let them have their time to develop. And uh, older whiskies, they won't change, no, not at all. Much more friendly now. The smokiness is there, but not 100%, uh, not 100 ppm, a lot less. It's slightly above the typical art bag, I think. This whiskey will be expensive, very expensive. You will have to pay 125 pounds sterling for a bottle plus shipping and perhaps taxes in the country where you receive the bottle. So this is really expensive for a bottle which is comparable to other art bags from my personal point of view. <clears throat> so if you're a collector this bottle is a must. You have to have it. Uh, if you are a connoisseur, I would buy <laughs> an Ugedal and a Cory Vrecken instead of this bottle. The prices will rise very fast when the first bottles on the market, on the free market. It won't be available on the free market until Artbeck ships it through the committee. And then you will see it on eBay and wherever and then they will be an agio on it. Yeah. 
I think the prices will rise very fast to levels around 200, 250 euros or pounds or dollars or whatever. So we will see a doubling in price very fast. Depends on how many bottles are available, but I think there won't be very many of them. Otherwise, they would have sold it as a regular, as a regular special bottling of art bag. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching whiskey.com. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Uh, feel free to share this video with your friends and feel free to ask your questions on our forum on whiskey.com.